So it's an honor for me today to have my dear friend, Dale DeGroff. Dale has won two James Beard Awards. He's won a Tales of the Cocktail Lifetime Achievement Award, and he's won a Wine Enthusiast Cocktail Legend Award, and has done many other things. Throughout the 1980s and 90s, he really resurged the American cocktail by bringing back recipes from the 1800s and the 1900s, by using fresh fruits and better ingredients. Uh, but of all these things, what I'm really happy is, is I get to call this guy my friend for just about 20 years now. I met him in Malaga, I believe, was it Malaga or Madrid? I can't remember. Rem remember, yeah, that was good drinks involved. Um, but I, it was somewhere in Spain that starts with an M. And uh, so I'm happy to have you here, brother. Delighted to be here. Uh, what is, my question for you is, what is your favorite martini? Uh, what's my favorite martini? This used to be so easy to answer. I would say beef feeder, eight, between eight and 11 to one. Uh, very cold, extra, you know, uh, it's just impossible to answer now. Why? Because I went into Audrey Saunders' wonderful Pegu Club and she made me a fitty fitty. And my life changed. I mean, Fitty Fitty goes back to 1888. Every martini was a Fitty Fitty right up to the turn of the century. And then I started finally to play with this idea of a Fitty Fitty. And that's what I'm doing here today. I'm using a mashup between the Vesper and the Smoky Martini. So I'm gonna use two parts of gin, one part of vodka. Let's get started. I'm free pouring because that's what I did all those years at the Rainbow Room, free Love pour. It. Love it. Uh, and I'm gonna go with the vodka. We're using a Reiki here, that's one part. And then I'm going to go with Ambrato, which I think is the most interesting block vermouth to come out in years. It's one of the first new bottlings that Martini has done in years, besides the Robino, which came out around the same time. About a half a part of that. And guess what? I'm going to have a little bitters in this drink, and I'm going to use mine. Very Why would nice. I use mine? Because I can. <laughs> hey, you should. <laughs> and I want, I want to increase those depletions, as my friend. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's get some ice in here. And I didn't put any ice in because I want to see where the line is that's got to go in that glass. Now I will put the ice. Normally with a, with a martini, you might put the ice in and pour the spirits over it. But in my case, when I'm free pouring, I really want to see that line so I can get at least kind of close to being right on the glass over here. Let's see if I am. If I'm not, I'll give the old man a little. Because uh, in between winning, winning these sort of out to pasture awards, I haven't had that much bartending going on. <laughs> so. Oh, I love it. I love anyway, it. Anyway. So anyway. what was a fitty fitty, just so everybody out there understands? 50-50 meant half gin, half vermouth. And that was the martini right up until the turn of the century when a very famous bar bartender named Charles Mahoney at the Holland House really started using London dry and a very dry, a London dry style and a very dry vermouth called Noelle Pratt. And changing the, uh, but he, he did, even he didn't call it a martini. He called it the Mahoney or, or, or the nutting cocktail or something because everybody thought of that great bartender, Harry Johnson, who published that iconic recipe in 1888 as the classic martini and nobody wanted to step on Harry's toes. And so everybody was honorable and, and, and called whatever they were making with the London Dry and different, because uh, Harry used the, Harry used the, uh, the, uh, the, the sweeter, uh, uh, Old Tom Jim. Old Tom, yes. Yeah. Anyway, what I've done here is create a Vesper. Now let's do the smoke part. The smoke part was a, a, a martini, a gin martini that was popular in New York City back in the 60s and 70s, where these gin martini drinkers would take a little bit of scotch and put it on top of their martini. Why? I don't know why. Because uh, they liked the smell when they picked it up. They were probably scotch drinkers too, and they went, oh yeah, that'll work. Is the soup spoon mandatory? Uh, no, the Chinese soup spoon just gives me about a little closer to what uh, the size of float should be rather than this little guy. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So the last time you and I saw each other, by the way, before I taste your work of art, um, I was giving you a whole rundown on 12 vintage Sambucas. Remember that? Yes. We that, all that story, yes. which we had a good time. Indeed. Malinari ended up being my favorite. The Malinari ended yeah. up being your favorite. The time before that, you had me singing. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> in one of your I got the horse, horse right, right here. here. My name is Paul. Thank you, here. Here. Thank you for that. Yes, Make yes. it a fool of yourself for me, with me. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. May I try your work Please do. Please all righty. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, ready to try the smoky martini number, number two. two. Oh. oh yeah, there's that nice little smoke right on top of there. Smoking yours. Yes, yes, yes. A little tart, slight little acidity 
on the aroma, some nuttiness. Where's the nuttiness coming well, from? Well, probably the ambrato. Yeah, yeah the ambrato. Bravo, bravo. Mmm. Mmm. This is a, a super bitter, and that's that, not in a bad way, but that's why it makes a, a much better martini than the regular Hendrix. Mm -hmm. The Orbeam. I, I, I didn't even and I'm it. getting that bitterness, but I'm getting a little bit of spice. I'm getting that smoke. I mean, all around, there's just a lot going on in a handful of ingredients, which is incredible. Really, really the incredible. Ambrato has a lot of spice in it. A lot of spice. Why. It's a block style. We all know, maybe not everybody knows, but bartenders know the block style is a little bit sweeter than the dry style vermouth. And so this, because this is quite bitter, the Orbeam, it kind of works. Nice, yeah. nice, very nice. And I love the, uh, listen, here's another one. I don't think we've ever done this on this show. But we've always debated garnish, good garnish, necessary, not necessary, head up, aroma, all those things. Here we have a liquid garnish, never seen before on Master Glass, and of course brought to you by the iconic Dale DeGroff, my brother. Thank you, Livio. I love you. I love <laughs> I you. Love you too, Thank brother. you for coming. If you did like this show, and if you did like seeing Mr. DeGroff, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button and hit subscribe to Master Glass, smash the bell so that you can get more expert instruction for everyday consumption.